uh, Dr. Sala, that we all know that uh, during the time of Sala, our clothes need to be clean and pure from any impurity. Now, let's suppose I have a T-shirt or a pajama, for example, and that t pajama, for example, it is mixed with uh, or by mistake there is a urine on it, mm. and I kept it aside and I thought to okay, I will wash it. But let's suppose I forgot to do that. And next day in the fajr, for example, I use the same pajama without knowing that it is already impure. I prayed my salah. So, and I didn't knew it at all. And I prayed it. So is my salah is going to be valid or not, Dr. Salah? Well, the answer to your question, yes, your prayer is valid and you don't have to repeat your prayer. And I will answer you now in details why. Uh, the prerequisites for any prayers to be valid at tahara at tahara tu shartu li sahat al salah at tahara or the purity is not meant only to purify your body via wudu or ghusl but also your clothes and also the spot on which you're offering the prayers and i got a different shape between the tahara of one's clothes or the spot or the body so for instance, if somebody after finished the prayer just realized, oh my God, I didn't even have wudu. Do I say the prayer is valid because you already finished it and you don't have to repeat it? No. The prayer is invalid and you will have to make wudu or acquire tahara and redo it. But with regards to the clothes, it is not required. If after I finished the prayer, somebody said, Sheikh, your clothes have some impurities. I check them out. Oh my God, astaghfirullah. What am I supposed to do? I already finished the prayer. You're, you're not supposed to do anything as far as repeating the prayer. Even if you're leading the prayer as an imam. And how do you get this answer? What makes the difference between the tahara of one's clothes or the tahara of one's body is the practice of the Prophet وسلم, since he was leading the prayer and in the middle of the prayer the companions observed that he has taken off his boots and he kicked them aside so they followed him they did the same and after the prayer he notes that everyone was barefooted he said why did you do that they said because we saw you so we followed you we thought it's it has been abrogated we're not allowed to pray in our shoes and boots anymore he said, no, if there was any abrogation or a change, I would have told you. Angel Gibraltar, peace be upon him, came to me and said that your boots have some najasa, impurities on the sword that he did not notice. So I took them off and I kicked them aside. That indicates that the Prophet ﷺ did not repeat the prayer. Rather, he resumed after he has taken off his shoes or boots, he continued the prayer which means the previous part was valid because he didn't know. So accordingly, if you figured out after you finished the prayer that you have some najasa on your clothes, you don't have to repeat the prayer.